So with that coat, we put on a full wet coat. But if you look at the panel, we might see some mottling. But initially, we just want to have that dry because sometimes we can rush it too much, if that makes sense. So we can see in the middle here, it's quite uniform. It's quite heavy. Uh, purposefully, I've put some heavy spots here. Um, and you can see the pigment almost separates and you get this, this dark effect. Um, I could probably put a line somewhere. Let's just try and do it. So if you come up here where I've over applied, I can put a stripe into the panel. I hope everyone can see that. So really we're in control of how this looks. I've put a stripe in it. What we're gonna do on the next coat is show you how to get rid of the mottling. So we're gonna do a full wet coat. I'm gonna add a little bit more reducer because I now have opacity, but now I want to be able to orientate my flake a little bit more so I can go up to 80% reducer on my mix. Or I could put a slightly slower reducer in there if I wanted to. I have to say, looking at this here, I think just a little bit more reducer will be enough to help it wet out. And then you will see me separate the panel this time I'll do it into three sections for you and then I'm going to do a drop coat over the top to get rid of the striping and then we'll have a look at it again. Hi guys, right, so you saw us in the booth, uh, hopefully you heard me, I know there's extraction going but what we were saying is we were able to put a stripe in there to show that over application can give a dark line. The right hand side of the panel I over applied um, and you can see a mottling, that's a very different type of mottling to an under applied mottling. Um, it almost looks like it's flowing and running within itself and you get this dark edge. What we're going to do now, because we've got some base coat on there and it, it's almost like a sponge, it soaks up the second coat. I'm going to add a little bit more reducer and to make your life easier, I'm going to show it in the cup. Normally I do it in the gun, but let's put the amount of product we've got left here and we'll do a measure out to see what we've got. So we should have about 350. Quite, yeah, so roughly 350 on there. I can add another sort of 15, 10 to 15% of the mixed product. Um, I'm happy with my choice of T3 with the conditions that we've got here. So I'm gonna add another 15% in here, roughly of the product, just to help it, help it wet out a little bit more. So it's, the, the, the point is, the first coat helps you get the opacity, it helps you understand what the metallic's doing. Then you can start to make your changes. I'm going crazy, as you can see already, trying to put the cap on there. Um, you can then make your mix and make your adjustments. So you get a good few times to, to choose how you're gonna apply this product. And those of you watching the video thinking, my God, Richard's gone crazy, the mixing sticks upside down. Actually, I'm mixing in a plastic bucket. Um, there's a hole in here. It helps me mix without catching the edges and tearing the plastic and putting potential contamination into my paint. So sometimes you'll see me mix with the stick up the other way. It's a perfectly acceptable thing to do. And actually, logic makes sense, right? If I'm on here mixing, if you can get the camera close and listen case, Hopefully I can get some particles. But you end up scratching the tin and putting plastic particles in your paint. So, we're gonna put the paint back in the gun. We're gonna go back in to make sure this is flashed off. And we'll discuss the panel really quickly when we go back in, because it may look different once it starts to dry out. Okay, so if we go back to the panel, it's dry, nothing's coming off on my finger. Little bit of marking there. But we can see this over application mottling still here. I don't know how clear that is on the camera. And then hopefully if you come into the top left hand corner, you'll see the stripe I put in there earlier. So quite a clear stripe just here. But then we have areas in the middle where we did our overlap and we feathered our overlap by flicking out that are perfect. There's no mottling, the panel's dried out perfectly. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna spray this with a full wet coat. I'm gonna break the panel into three sections and then I'm gonna cross coat.
And now, I'm going to drop my gun pressure. About half a bar, and I'm going to do this gun. Okay, so we've given it about five minutes, let the booth clear. Um, we've got a, a time limit to get into this booth until we know we're clear and we can breathe safely. The panel's actually still wet, but it's worth just showing you guys. We broke it into three, but if you remember the striping in the top corner, um, we've been able to remove that. The striping is gone. If you look at the over application runs within the panel, that has now gone. What we're going to wait and do now is see how this dries out. Um, there's a little bit of mottle there, to be fair. Um, I'm hoping that will go. If it doesn't, uh, I can change my solvent mix. I can go, well, actually, maybe let's go with a little bit of T5 just to slow it down. That gives the metallic plate the time to, to um, sort of flop and sit the way it should in the panel. But let's give it 15, 20 minutes. We'll come back, have a look, see if we're ready to clear. So welcome back all. Um, before we showed you a metallic finish, but what we didn't do is show you how to assess a metallic finish before. So what I wanted to do was show you uh, what we have here, uh, a day lamp light. We tend to use these when we're in a, a tent or an area where the lighting isn't quite as good. And, and what we have is a lamp. And what we can do is we can assess the panel through 180 degrees. So we're looking at all angles uh, from the top from the bottom, from the side, and we're, we're showing that we have a very uniform finish. And what, why do I do that? Well, if, you, if I end up doing a shadow puppet on the surface, if all my flakes are falling this way, it'll give me a different light reflection off of the flake up. If they're all this way, the light reflection will be going that way. So you have a dark or a light tone, depending which way the, the reflection goes back off the panel. So that orientation that we do is important, but likewise, when we're assessing, we need to look every way. So from top to bottom through 180 degrees and side to side to make sure everything's good. Hi guys, welcome back. So we've given it about 20 minutes now just to flash off. So we saw um, the clouding that we had before and we showed you the process with the overlaps, the misting. So I just wanted you to have a, a look. I'm using a daylight lamp. Uh, hopefully it gives you an idea of what we've got. But we have a beautifully uniform grey metallic finish. Um, this is said to be one of the most challenging colours to spray in, in any paint manufacturer because you've got primarily a, a black base with a aluminium flake. But what we can see here is there's absolutely no mottling at all. Uh, no stripes, no clouding. You all saw that we split this panel effectively into three. I appreciate you're gonna say it's a small panel, but if we look at this as a process, um, we can certainly escalate this up to larger surface areas. So I hope um, for all of you, that shows it's not impossible. Uh, I'm probably gonna leave that maybe for another hour before I clear coat it. I don't think the clear coat is the most important thing to show, but please be warned, if you overcoat too quickly with your clear, it can lift the base underneath and give some sort of mottling um, and dark effect. So the question to special effects is just don't rush them guys. Take your time and you're gonna end up with a perfect, perfect finish. So thanks for joining us. Case behind the camera, thank you. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.